So what this webinar is going to be is it's just going to be very, very basic. So this is mainly for all of you brand, brand new CorelDRAW users with the very basic tools. I'm on the left side toolbar. I'm going to go over some different features on the left side toolbar here, um, just some different settings in Corel, what the different tools do as far as uh, squares and three-point curve tools and and all different types of things. So the main thing with this is if, if you've seen this before, if you are pretty fluent with CorelDRAW already, um, a lot of it's going to be very rep repetitive for you. Um, we do have a lot of new CorelDRAW users that are just diving into the program and brand new, so we want to make sure that um, all of them understand the basic concept, concepts of CorelDRAW to be able to um, obviously benefit with the TRW Stone Wizard the most as possible and know how to do all of their different vector paths and everything else. So we're not even, even though you see the TRW Stone Wizard pulled up here on my screen, I'm going to close that down here in a minute. We're not going to be doing anything with the actual Stone Wizard today. Um, tomorrow on Tuesday at 10.30 a.m., Rudy is going to be holding a live webinar just like this where he's going to be going over the very, very basic um, introduction of the TRW Stone Wizard and what it, it can actually do for you, okay? So any of you that have questions throughout the process, feel free to ask. I'll definitely answer your questions. When it comes to actually doing designs and things like that in this webinar, we're not going to be doing that just because, again, it's very basic CorelDRAW features showing you how to set up CorelDRAW, how to add some different features to make it easier, and then just the basic tools. So uh, any questions before we get going, before we get started here? Um, Karen, no worries if uh, if you want to hang out, Karen. Um, I know it's probably a lot of stuff that you may have seen already, but we have up to 500 users, so we're not even close to filling up the class right here. We just mentioned it um, this morning. So if you think like anything will help you, you might pick up something, Karen. Feel free to stay in, but you're not taking anybody's spot, so no worries about that. Okay, so Lisa, yeah, the features are definitely going to be a little bit different as far as from Corel Paint and things like that. So um, Corel Draw is obviously a different program, even though it's it is all Corel, but there are going to be different features. So basically, I just want everybody to kind of know what is in your toolbar here on the left hand side. Up at the top here, we have our TRW Stone Wizard custom toolbar. So we're not going to be going over this today. And because those of you who may own CorelDRAW but don't currently own the Stone Wizard aren't going to have all the features in this top toolbar right here, okay? Okay, perfect. So just real quickly, just to get an idea of all of you here, how many of you currently own CorelDRAW X5, X6, or X7? How many of you currently do own CorelDRAW? And then also... How many of you have been working with CorelDRAW for, let's say, less than a month? So give me an idea as far as how long you have been working with CorelDRAW. Whether you're a you're brand new beginner, you just started, you've been working with it for years, or, okay, awesome, I'm seeing a lot of you are less than a month, just bought it at the show, um, just bought it at Charlotte, awesome, awesome. Okay, very good, and that's what I was hoping. So with any of our webinars, we're always going to try and let you know what the skill level is because we don't want you to waste time when you come into a webinar like this and I'm just going over some very, very basic things. So when you are doing different things or we're doing stuff, you are going to be able to know if it's something that's going to obviously benefit you. So if you know all the very basic features of CorelDRAW, this, this webinar might not be as beneficial to you, where we do have a lot of users like I'm seeing right here that may have just purchased CorelDRAW at the Charlotte MBM show that we were just at or just purchased it within the last few weeks or the last month and kind of want some different ideas of how to use some of the different tools. Okay. So real quickly, who, who was actually at the NBM Charlotte show this last week with us and was able to uh, come to some of our 
our classes. We had two classes at the Charlotte show that were awesome. We had a packed classes, standing room only, which was very cool. I appreciate all of you coming by there, but I see a lot of you here actually were at the Charlotte show, so that's awesome. It was great meeting all of you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close down the TRW Stone Wizard here, and we're just going to start some very, very basic features with CorelDRAW. So um, one of the biggest features you'll see is I'm going to actually close this page. And now I'm working in CorelDRAW X7 here. So the features are very similar, whether it's X5, X6, or X7. X7 does have a little bit different uh, layout, but it's going to be, all the features are going to be basically the same for you. So to open a new page, I can go to the top left here. I see a new page. I can hit Control-N, or I can go to File New. So a couple different ways to obviously open a new page. Now I have a new page here and you can see right here is going to be my page dimensions. So right now this page dimension is set at 20 inches wide by 15 inches tall. So I like to have pretty decent sized page dimensions to make sure that my designs are always fitting within my page dimensions. So for example if you were working in the TRW Stone Wizard and you're doing a mock-up or anything like that, you want to make sure that it is within your page dimensions to do the, mo the mock-up correctly. So I like to have a decent size, 20 by 15, 20 by 20 is a size that I like to use. Okay, so there is different ways to customize some of your settings in CorelDRAW, and that's what I want to show you off the start. Okay, so if I go to Tools up here, and then I go to Customization, that's going to pull up my options pop-up menu here for customization. So you'll see my, my workspace, and the first one I'll go to is general. So the general here, start a new document, you have a couple different options with your, whether you want a welcome screen, whether, on, and this is all on CorelDRAW startup. So when CorelDRAW starts up and you click on CorelDRAW, it's just a matter of do you want it to go to the welcome screen, to start a new document, to open an existing document. So you've got a couple different selections there. I like to choose to just start a new document because the welcome screen I see over and over and over. I like it to just pull up a new document for me and I'm ready to go. Okay. Now here you can have it show your new document dialog box. So what that means is if I have that checked, it's going to allow me to kind of customize the dimensions of that document. Where I know I want it to open at about the 20 by 15 every time, so I don't need to see that dialog box because I know that it's easy to edit it at, from that point on. Okay? So I'm going to go down to the next one, and this is display. So there's a few different things in display that I like to change, and one of them is this one right here. Yours is not going to be checked off the start, and this is our highlight outline for selected objects. And I'm going to show you what the difference is when you're doing something like that. So just to give you an idea of what that is, is I'm going to draw a couple different squares here, okay? So I have a few different squares, and I'm going to draw one more here, and I'm going to change the color of these squares to red, to blue, to a darker blue, and to an orange. And I'll go over this once we start going over the colors and stuff. But watch what happens when I select on an object. I'm going to click here, and here, and here. Okay, or even if I just selected just the red, I held shift and selected the blue. Now, I only have four objects, so it's still pretty easy to see what I'm looking at here. But the thing is, is there it's it's going to be a lot easier. I wanted to kind of highlight what I'm selecting. I, I can kind of tell that I have the red and the blue selected, but not really. It's not really giving me, it's showing me my border and my nodes around it, but it isn't really giving me an idea of what I'm selecting. And when it comes to rhinestones, that's going to be, um, and you're using all those little rhinestone circles, that's going to save you a lot of time and make it a lot easier when you're designing. So see how it's not showing much right now? Again, I'll click on both of them. It's not really showing that they're selected too much. Watch what happens when I go to Tools, Customization, and Display, and this time I'm going to Highlight Outline for Selected Objects and hit OK. Now see how it has the dotted line in there now? So now I can see if I select the blue, now it has that blue selected as well. Something very simple, but can everybody see how the, the everything has the dotted lines around it now and you can see the actual objects that you have selected? 
So it's going to save you a lot of time when you're doing designs and more. Obviously, this is a very basic design. It's just four squares. But when you're doing complex designs like rhinestones and everything else, having each of the different circles highlighted like this with the dotted lines is going to make it a lot easier to see them. Okay? All right, perfect. So that's one of them. So back to customization. And so that one I have highlight outline for selected objects. Next thing is our steps. I like to move my steps up to a decent amount for whether you're going back or forward for previewing different steps. So I just set mine at 256. So this is going to be a, uh, we are going to record this webinar as well. So you'll be able to go back and change all of your different settings to any of these that you think are going to help you. Now, when I go to editing here, one thing I like to do is watch. If I click on you're probably going to be either set to small or medium for your node sizes, okay? So if I have small node sizes, see how when I zoom in here, how small these little nodes are? See how they're kind of hard to see if I were to, and I'll give you a better better example of that. Is let me just type out a letter B here. And with this letter B, I'm going to convert it to curves real quick. And see how these nodes right here are pretty small? Like I can get to them and when I highlight one of them, the box gets a little bit larger, but I want to make it a lot easier to be able to grab the different nodes and see those. So I'm going to go up here to tools and my customization and edit, and I'm going to change this to large. So now my node size is set to large. When I come back to this, see how much bigger the nodes are now to be able to see? So can everybody see that big difference of that? So again, it's going to make it a whole lot easier when you're editing designs in Corel Draw to be able to see those nodes a little bit easier. So these are just different little settings that I like to do when I first get into Corel. When you set these settings one time, they're always going to be saved for you. Okay. Next thing I have is we're going to go down to Save. And on the save right here, you can see I have mine saved to back up every five minutes. Right now, you're probably going to be set to, I think the default setting might be 20 minutes. Well, what that means is if for some reason you hit some crazy buttons and um, Corel Draw crashes, something like that, you're going to lose basically 20 minutes worth of work. Well, I like to be safe. I back it up every five minutes. That way, if something happens, uh, lightning, power surge, anything that shuts off my computer, the most I'm going to lose basically is five minutes worth of work. And then you can have it set to save to any specific folder that you want. Okay, does everybody understand what I'm saying with that? So anytime you have anything that you're working on, you're working on a big design, you're working in Corel Draw, make sure to change this these save settings around. How many of you are, have already changed your save settings, like in the past? Because I know I've shown that in a couple different features or a couple different webinars that we've done in the past. But if you are brand new to Corel Draw, make sure to change this because, believe me, it's going to save you a lot of headache when you're working on design. You've got everything looking nice, and the power goes out, your battery dies on your laptop, whatever it is, and you want to make sure that you have a backup of it. Okay? So let me go ahead and hit OK. Now, I did have a question. Somebody said about some different shortcuts. We have some shortcuts for Corel Draw, and those of you who have not seen those, I'm going to show you real quick. Can everybody see our website that I just pulled onto the screen? Can you see our website on the screen now? Yeah? Awesome. OK, so on our website, if you go to Tutorials and then down to documentation, quick, quick tips and tricks. So there's all types of different tutorials, which obviously are great for videos to see what you're doing. But if you go down to documentation down here, so tutorials and then documentation, what that's going to bring you to is this page here. So on this page, we have this document right here called TRW Stone Wizard and Corel Draw Shortcuts. So I recommend that all of you go grab this off the website and print it out. And you can see when I pull it up here, 
These are all different quick keyboard shortcuts for Corel Draw, like Control C, Control V, Control Q, all different types of things to group, envelope, convert outlines to objects, ungroup, zoom. Basically, all the different shortcuts that we use all the time when we're designing, we put into this document for you to be able to print it out real quick, have it right next to your computer, and it's going to save you a lot of time. Okay? So everybody saw where to get this document here, and then you can easily just print it out. So that's going to save you a lot of time as far as your different keyboard shortcuts. Now what we're going to start doing is going down some of our different tools here in CorelDRAW. Okay? So our first tool that you're going to see at the very top is our pick tool. So what the pick tool is, is let me just draw some squares again. The pick tool is what's going to allow you to select objects. So I'm just left clicking on it and I can drag the objects around to different areas as I left click and hold it. So that's very simple. And then if you want to select multiple objects, there's a couple different ways you can do it with the pick tool. Obviously you can highlight all of the objects that you want selected. Now you can see these bottom two right here, I don't have the entire box selected, so it's not going to select them. It only selects what you have entirely highlighted with your square. So I have all four of the right side highlighted, it selects all four of those. If I only have these two in the middle highlighted, it's going to just move those two around. Okay. Very easy with that, and then there's one more tool with the pick tool, and that's if I click on one of them, and let's say I wanted to get to this one right here. Well, if I drew a square around it, it would select this middle one too, but I just want to select this one and this one. I can click here, hold shift, and then click on the other one, and then it's just going to select those. So anytime you hold shift, it's going to allow you to click additional items that you want selected and then move them around. Everybody see those three different options we had there? So just clicking on a single item, highlighting them, or clicking on one, holding shift, and then clicking on multiple items to select. Okay, perfect. And just to let you guys know, um, Rudy is also in here with us, and he's going to be able to answer questions if so. Any time throughout this process, we want you to take advantage of the live webinars and being able to ask questions real time. So if you have questions throughout this process, please make sure to ask, and I will cover it, or Rudy will also um, answer the question right on the chat as well. But if it's a live webinar, obviously we want you to take advantage of being able to get your answer or your answer your question answered live and we want to be able to help you right here instead of just a recorded video okay what's up Thomas how you doing buddy all right so let's go ahead and see how this um, pick tool right there has a little black arrow at the bottom well if I click on that little black arrow it's gonna show me another tool and that's my freehand pick tool so what the freehand pick tool is gonna do is watch this one now I have my freehand pick tool selected, so what I can do now is I can basically just draw an area of what I want selected. So I drew around that box, and it selected that one. If I draw around these two boxes, it selects these two. If I draw around everything, it selects everything. So the freehand pick tool, especially when you're doing rhinestones, is going to be very important and you're going to use that feature a lot. Let me see, I'm going to pull in a, let me see if I can pull in an actual rhinestone design here real quick just to give you an idea of what I mean with this. So if I have a rhinestone design in here and I'm just going to select all of it, move it over a little bit here, and I'm going to go ahead and I got to ungroup it real quick. It's harder to find the ungroup because I'm so used to having it in um, in the wizard and our shortcuts. So I'm going to pull up the wizard right here. So with the freehand pick tool, watch what I can do. Like say, for example, we wanted just this part of the baseball bat right here. Okay, If I wanted just part of that part of the baseball bat and I had the regular pick tool, this is what would happen. 
I would select down to there, and then it's going to pull off part of my L's, maybe a little bit of my M, part of my baseball, and everything else. Well, obviously, you don't want to shift click on every different circle there in the rhinestone design. That doesn't make sense. That's where you're going to bring in your freehand pick tool. So with the freehand pick tool, what I can do is pretty awesome, is I can just draw around the area I want selected, and then check that out. It selected just that part of the baseball bat that I want. Okay? Everybody see what I did there? So the freehand pick tool allows you to get a lot more precise in your selection to where if I just wanted the word baseball there, let's just say I wanted just the S in baseball here. I could highlight just around that S. I basically just drew a circle around it, and you can pull the S out. If you wanted just the B here, I could pull that out. So very, very easy and very powerful tool that a lot of you, how many of you that are in here currently have used the freehand pick tool before and how many of you have never used it? It's a tool that's going to save you a lot of time once you learn how to use it. So I know a lot of you are brand new, so a lot of you are just getting into Corel and you see your regular pick tool up there and think that it's great, but this freehand pick tool, from seeing what I'm doing here, do you see how it's going to save you a lot of time? So definitely a time saver, especially when you're doing rhinestone designs, because to pick that out with the regular pick tool, I'm going to obviously try and draw a square around that. And to get it all, I'm going to pull away part of my baseball and part of my L. So it's definitely going to take a lot longer to shift click all of those items. Okay. And the thing is, is even if I were using the TRW Stone Wizard and I selected by color, well, that's not going to, it's going to select all of that color, not just that special, special section of the baseball bat right there. Okay? So, any questions real quick before we move on from the regular pick tool and the freehand pick tool? Everybody good with that? Thumbs up? Yes? Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, so next one we have here is our shape tool. So a couple of different things in our shape tool we don't really use in, in what we do with rhinestones. And it's a little too complex right now to show you with the, with the smooth and the smear and the twirl, attract, all that stuff. That's when you're getting into the actual vector designs. Um, how am I undoing? Oh, Linda, great question. Linda asked, how am I undoing each thing that I do? So I'll show you. If I go, um, let's go here, and I'm going to go to Control-Z. So Linda, Control-Z is what I use. So Z as in zebra. So watch. If I moved, ungroup this, and I move part of this M over to there, and I move part of this over to there, Obviously, you don't want to have to go like this and go back and try and line everything up perfectly. It's going to take forever. So to go back steps, if you mess up, hold Control and hit Z as in zebra, Z as in zebra, and you can just keep hitting Z, and it'll just keep going back to your original design. Okay? So that is a great shortcut. Honestly, when I'm doing designs, I keep my pinky finger on control all the time because I use control C, control V, control Z, a lot of the different control features throughout my designs. Okay? So with our shape tool here, very, very powerful tool. Have a lot of you used the shape tool before? Just to get an idea, show you some things we can use with the shape tool. So I'm just going to type out the word baseball here. And just going to show you, this is just with text, but I'll also show you with a design like a heart or something like that. So I'm going to switch to an impact font here. Now with the shape tool, there's a couple different things I can do. So right now if I double clicked on this font, it's a true type font still, which means I could still type letters in here. Okay, so I can't really do much with my shape tool right now other than edit the actual font. So if I have a true type font that's currently selected and I click on my shape tool, it's going to allow me to edit where my letter is. So I could technically move my A to right here or move my A over there. I could stretch my L 
out to here, I could move my S over here. So that's what all of these little boxes do with your shape tool. Another thing I could do is I could grab this arrow and spread everything out. And I'm just holding my left key or drag it back. So you can spread it out or drag it back. Pretty cool features when you're doing a lot of different designs like we do. Okay? So that's just the shape tool for an actual true type font, which means it's still a typable font. Does everybody understand the difference there? Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually convert this to curves. So I'm going to go object and then control Q or convert to curves. So now when I converted it to curves, see all the different nodes in here? All these different little squares? Well, what that means is if I double click it, I can edit each of these nodes. So let's just say I wanted this node to go way down to there for some reason. And that's now my new font. So it's not a typable font anymore, but I was able to edit the node to whatever I wanted. Does everybody see what I'm doing there? So this is when you're working with designs and you want to, maybe it's not very a very clean design, you want to edit some nodes around, move some things around. That's where your actual shape tool is going to come into effect. Um, is the text still editable after the shape tool? Linda, it is still editable as long as you did not convert it to curves. As soon as you convert it to curves, now when you double click on it, it's just going to show all the different nodes and allow me to stretch the letters out or do whatever I want with it. Okay? So you can do some pretty cool things with this. So let's say, for example, I wanted to move this side of this A down. I could highlight both of those nodes, drag this down to there if I wanted. Then what I could also do is I could come in here and I could double click on that area. So I just added a node and I could double click again. I added another node. So I'm just adding nodes to this. So see how I can move it around now? So now I could come in here, I could grab this node, and I could make this A go over this way a little bit if I want. So I could say I want the A to look like this now. Okay, if I wanted this spot to go all the way down here, I could have the A go all the way down here. So all types of different things you can do when you're editing nodes like this to make the design look pretty cool and change a font around just to look a little bit different. So you can do a lot of things with the editing of nodes, but obviously if I didn't like the way this looked, I wanted to go back, just hit Control Z, 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 and Z, and it brought it all the way back. So can this be used for vinyl or rhinestones? Tanya, yes. <clears throat> now, as far as editing the nodes, if it's a rhinestone design, you wouldn't necessarily want to edit the nodes because they have to be those perfect circles. So you're not really going to edit nodes when it comes to the rhinestone circles. But if you're asking, can Corel Draw in the program be used for rhinestones and regular vinyl, that's correct. So um, Corel Draw and the TRW Stone Wizard are for sign vinyl, heat transfer vinyl, rhinestones, basically anything with the design process. Okay. So let's go ahead and change a couple things around if we were to have something different like a heart. So watch what we're going to do here. Couple different ways we can get to this and I, I just want to show you right up here in the top toolbar some different things. So file right there is going to be all of your stuff as far as opening a new document or um, opening a file that you currently have saved as a CDR file. You can open recent files. You can close files. You can save as. You can save them as a template. Or you can import. So those are all your basic file features. When it comes to edit, you're going to see all of your copies, your paste, your replaces, your um, repeat, your undo. So again, very similar to most software and different programs that you're going to use. And then you have all of your wireframe, your enhanced frame. I'll show you what that means once we get into this heart right here. 
um, your layout, how you want your page set up, your background colors, things like that, um, all of your different objects here. So all, all of these top areas are going to have your drop-down menus if you want to use your envelope tools, uh, your different bitmaps, your text properties. So all of those are built into here. This would be a little bit more of an intermediate class for CorelDRAW getting into um, some of the different features like the contours and the envelopes and things like that. But I still want to keep this very beginner so you can just kind of get a get an actual grasp of creating the basic shapes and what those tools do for you. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to something like that, which is right down here. You'll see kind of a polygon shape here. Well, if you click on the black area of that area of that polygon shape, right down here you're going to see basic shapes. So if I click on basic shapes, right up here at the top, it's going to open up a new toolbar for you. So I can see I have some triangles and plus signs and cylinders and smiley faces and lightning bolts and hearts and a bunch of different basic shapes. So if I just click on the actual heart there, then I can draw a heart just like this. Okay, so very easy to draw a heart. Couple different features while you're drawing that heart that you have options of is if I were to hold control and let me go over here to the heart and let me select a new one actually. So when you're drawing an actual heart, I'm on my basic shapes, I go to a heart and lightning bolt or whatever it is. If I hold control and draw it, what it's going to do is it's going to keep it proportionate no matter what. Okay? So no matter where I drag, it's going to keep that heart looking perfect. If I let go of control, now I can do anything I want with it. So I can get crazy with the heart if I want it real short and wide, tall and skinny, whatever you want. You have the ability to change the heart to any shape you want. As soon as I hit control again, it's going to keep it proportionate. So it's going to keep it like a nice shaped heart there for me. So now what we're going to do is we want to fill this heart. Very easy to fill it. Just come over here. Let me close down the wizard. Come over here to your Corel Draw Colors. And I'm just going to click on any color I want. If I want it to be red, left click on red. Pink, purple, orange, any color you want, just left click. Okay? So green right there, you're going to see when you zoom in, you still have a black outline on that. Well, that outline is basically so if you didn't have a fill, just so you can see that the heart is still there. All right, so you can even change that outline to different colors if you right click. So if I right click on blue or dark blue or orange or yellow or red, you can see that outline color is changing. So left click is to fill, right click is to change that outline color. So if I wanted to increase that outline size right up here in my point size, I can increase that to 12 and it's going to increase that size for me. Okay? Very simple. Everybody see that? So most of the steps, they are very basic. They're very simple, but <clears throat> most of you that are brand new to CorelDRAW aren't going to obviously know these features and that's why we like to do these webinars is to show you, hey, there's a big difference if you have a heart, whether you right click to change the outline or left click to change the fill. And we don't want you to have to read through a two, three hundred page manual or, or search it online to be able to find these. We want to be able to show them to you live here in the webinars. Okay? All right. Any questions so far with the fills or the basic shape area right here? Everybody good with that? Okay, perfect. So I'm going to delete my heart there. Next, we have a crop tool. So crop tool... Control Z, I'm going to bring back my heart because I want to show you what the crop tool is going to do for me. So I'm going to bring that in. Let's change that one to yellow there. And I'll change this one to a pink. We can change our outline color just by right clicking. So I have three different hearts here, okay? And let's say I just wanted to crop out one or two of these hearts or whatever it is. 
So if I click on my crop tool here and I just draw a square around, that means I want to crop it out, double click, and see what it did? It cuts it perfectly into whatever you cropped. So it cut these hearts and shapes perfectly in that area. So I'm just going to control Z to go back and show you again. Click on the crop tool. If I wanted to crop out now, once you let go, you can still edit this part here. So you can see the big difference of what's highlighted and what's not highlighted. So if I wanted to crop out just the area here that I have that's all nice and highlighted, just double click on it and there we go. So now all of this is cropped out perfect for me to be able to cut, do whatever I want. So you're going to use the cropping tool a lot when you do work with different images or different things like that. But <laughs> I got you, Thomas. But <laughs> Okay, that's a bad crop right there on the yellow heart, I was told. <laughs> so depending on what you're going to crop, just make sure you crop it right. But let's go ahead and show you one more time with a crop. Right here, I want to crop out just that area, double click on it, and it's cropped out perfect for you. Okay? So, any questions on the crop tool? So, you use crop in a lot of different programs. Most programs um, have a crop tool, so most of you are, are pretty familiar with it, but it does work a little bit different with CorelDRAW because these are still vector objects. So you can see all of the paths here, and it's really nice when they're vector objects like that to be able to still edit it, and if I double click on it, I can still edit these actual nodes here, okay? And that was going to be the next thing I was going to show you right here is to edit these nodes, check this out. So I have this heart right here. I'm going to delete these other two. I just highlighted them both and deleted. If I right-click on the X up here, it's going to get rid of my outline. So I wanted to get rid of that outline. I just right-clicked on the X over here on my um, color palette. So now I double-click on this heart, and it's converted to curves right here. So you can see if I grab this node right there, I can change this heart to whatever I want. So I'm changing the shape of this heart to anything I want right now. What you can also do is see these different handles right here? You can grab the handle and change the shape of the heart through the handles as well. So if you wanted a little bit more rounded at the bottom there, and you want a little bit more rounded at the bottom on this side, you can do that. If you wanted it to come straight up to this area, you could do that as well. So with these edit node features and double clicking on it when you are converted to curves, it's very simple to go ahead and edit these for your heart or whatever it is. So you can see all of these different little handlebars that we have here. We can grab each one of the arrows and change this design around to whatever we want. So your editing capabilities are huge inside of CorelDRAW and being able to manipulate any design that you're working with. Okay? All right, perfect. So next one we have here is Zoom. I have honestly probably never used the Zoom tool. And the reason why I've probably never used it is, say for example, we want to get to this edge right here, that little node. Do you really want to come over here, click on Zoom, highlight here, and then zoom in? Or would you, and then when you have to zoom out, you come over here, you go to Zoom, and you can't even really zoom out because there's only this much area to see. Well, what I like to do, and that's what everybody I think should be doing, is get a mouse that has a roller on it and just roll in, roll out. So you can go in, out, you want to get to that node right there. Wherever your mouse is is where it's going to zoom into. So there's the node, zoom out. You want to get to this node, zoom in, zoom out. Over here, zoom in, zoom out. So it's going to save you a ton of time using the roller feature on the zoom to be able to zoom in and zoom out, especially when you're working with rhinestone designs. And the reason why is I'm going to pull one up right here just to show you. To zoom in and zoom out on this, you may need to move some different circles every now and then. So let's say you need to move this circle right here is a little out of place, and you need to move that. You can just 
zoom right in on that, move it over, and zoom out. If you want to get to this stone right here, zoom right in on that stone. So wherever your arrow is pointing, it's going to zoom right into that area. And as soon as you roll it out, it's going to zoom out to your entire design. Um, we did have a question, is there and so you can add notes when you want to remember a font name, etc. <laughs> um, not really anything with notes, Susan, as far as knowing a font name. Um, what we've done before sometimes when we are working with one is if it's a specific font that we want to use, if you don't convert it to curves, then you'll always be able to see what font you're working with. Like up here, it'll say College Black. So if I saved this that I type right here, it's always going to show that it's college black or you could just type it in your actual design but as far as saving it like that not really um, in the wizard we do have a font favorites section where you can save all your favorite fonts but not for an actual note area in Corel draw there okay okay so let's move down to the next one here and the next one is our basic rectangle so very simple, it's a rectangle. Click on my rectangle tool. I'm going to left click, drag it out to wherever I want. As soon as I let go, now I have a rectangle. I want to draw another one, let go, another one. If I hold control, just like that heart, it's going to draw a perfect square for me. So very simple, you want a rectangle, just drag it to wherever you want. You want a perfect square, hold control, and it's going to be a perfect square. Okay. Now, when you draw something like a square, again, pretty cool feature here. If I clicked on my shape tool and I grabbed the corner, see what it does there? You can shape it so it's a rounded square. You can pull in the nodes to where it's an actual perfect circle now. Bring it back to a perfect square. If I were to hold control, I could pull in just that corner if I wanted. Hold control. Pull in just that corner. Hold shift and it'll pull in both the opposite ones. So a lot of different tools and features you can use by just your control and shift features when you're using your shape tool. So does everybody see how I did that with the square? Basically I just had a basic square there and then I clicked on my shape tool. I'll get these big black boxes here and I can draw it to a perfect circle, perfect square, hold control. I can pull in that area. I can pull in this area by holding control. So whatever you want, you have the full capabilities to be able to edit that square, the circle, whatever it is. So, for example, if we had an ellipse, I draw this ellipse. You can see we have kind of Pac-Man here. Well, that's because right up here I have the pie selected. So you can have your ellipse tool selected, and that's going to be a full circle. So there's my full circle there. Now, if I go to my shape tool on the circle, what that's going to do is allow me to edit it kind of like that Pac-Man or Pi. Now, one quick little hint here that I, I'm sure a lot of you, it took me a while to figure this one out as well. With this black square right here, when I edit it, See how it's still keeping it that kind of pie shape and it's all closed off? Well, that's because I'm left clicking it and I'm moving it inside of the circle. Watch, as soon as I move outside of the circle to do it, watch what it does. Now, it actually opens it up. So if I edit it inside the circle, it closes it. Outside, inside, outside. So it makes a big difference just where your little arrow is when you're changing this. Because if I move outside, that line disappears. If I move inside, that line's there. Everybody see the difference of when you're outside and inside there? <coughs> okay, awesome. Okay, perfect. So we got Pac-Man here. Let's go ahead and kill Pac-Man. And we're going to use some of our different tools. So these are going to be your probably most used tools in CorelDRAW. So we got our freehand tool, our two-point line, um, our pen tool, our B-spline tool, our polyline, our three-point curve. The ones that I use the most are by far my two-point line, my B-spline, and my three-point curve. 
Um, when you center the object to page, do you just hit the letter C? We had a question. Karen came in. Karen, if I just had this and I hit the letter C, that's not going to do anything. If I hit the letter P, as in pirate, hit P, that's going to center it directly to the page. Does that make sense? So if I want it centered to let directly to my document, and again, that's a great shortcut. Have it over here. I hit P. It centers it directly to the page. So P for page. Now, if you wanted it centered directly to another object, I would select both objects. I would hit C. Okay, and that's going to align them to the center, or P, and that will align them perfectly to the page. Those make sense there, Karen? <clears throat> so if I had both of them off to the side, P is going to bring them perfectly centered to the page. If I just wanted them to be centered next to each other, I would hit C. And that's going to make them centered directly next to each other, but it's not going to change the area to where it's going to center them directly on top of each other. We had a question, can I see that with text? Of course. And this is where you would use this most anyway. So if I had baseball, so I have the word baseball and then baseball mom. And I had baseball mom, this one's 10.1 inches, we'll make them about the same. So if I wanted to center this baseball mom, Sometimes it's a little harder to make sure and center like this. So what I would do is just highlight both of them and hit C, and that's going to center them both directly next to each other. Okay? So watch. It's moved over here. Highlight both of them, C, and they're going to be centered perfectly. Now, if I would have hit P, it's going to center them directly on top of each other, and you don't want that when you're using actual letters or words. All right, any questions on the centering there? Did that make sense? <clears throat> okay, perfect. So with our tools here, very quickly, freehand, two-point line, B-spline tool, three-point curve. So a freehand tool, very easy. It's a freehand tool. I'm going to left-click, and I can just draw wherever I want. So see how I just drew the line? to anything I wanted there. Very simple. It's just going to follow along with the path that you draw. Okay? So if we move that out of the way and we come over to our next one, which is the two-point line, I can left-click. Now you're going to see a line that I drag around and if I let go, it's going to drop that line. So it's just going to make a perfect line. So I could drag over to this and once I hit that actual other node, it's going to be good. Let go, and it's going to draw me a perfectly straight line. Um, the, is the freehand tool used to trace? Tanya, no. I'm going to show you the trace tool in just a minute. Uh, freehand tool, honestly, I don't use it that much because it is pretty difficult to draw with a mouse. Like, you got to think. If I were to try and draw... I don't know, a, a fish with the freehand tool right here. You can see I'm going to go to here. And see how it's even a, hard to come back to the actual area there? So very hard with the freehand tool to draw something like this. I honestly don't use the freehand tool uh, a whole lot. I am more, the B-spline tool, as many of you know, is my favorite, and that's the next one I'm going to show you here. So B-spline tool, here's what I do. I click, and then when I click again, see how it starts going with wherever my next click is going to be? So as I move this, my next click, it kind of rounds with it. So then I go here, and then you can see those blue boxes that it's dropping is each time that I'm left-clicking. Can everybody see that? So this is how you're going to get nice, smooth lines, and then come all the way back, attach it, and I have an object that I can fill if I want. Pretty simple. 
Um, when you're making a design, it's untitled. How do you name it? Um, and then I also see if you name it in the Stone Wizard and export it EPS, do you still need to save the file? Okay, Susan, two good questions. So, a couple different things we can do here. Up here, we got it named with, it's obviously untitled, okay? So, what I would do is I would just go here to File, Save As real quick, and we're going to save it as Test 1. So, let me save it as Test 1 and hit save and then once we have this saved this up here at the top is going to change and we know that's test one file okay now if you save it in the TRW stone wizard as a export it as a CDR file then that will save it as well so you don't have to do it twice okay okay so next question I had here is can you do the B spline tool again and show me? Yep, no problem. So B spline tool, click. I want to follow an area. I'm just going to go around here wherever I want to click. Double click to finish it, and I have a perfect line right there with nice smooth flow throughout the entire line. Okay. Um, do you had another question? Do you save all your work on your desktop? No, Tanya. Only files that I'm going to grab real quick. Do I have on the desktop? I normally save all of our files um, in Dropbox, just so we have it all backed up and secure in case uh, anything crashes with your computer. So I would recommend getting something um, off your computer, as in Dropbox or some type of cloud-based to be able to save your files just in case, but you can also save them on your computer as well. <clears throat> okay, perfect. And then the last tool we have here is our three-point curve tool. So three-point curve tool, left click, drag it out. As soon as I let go, now it's going to allow me to edit this to whatever I want. So I did point one, point two, and then wherever I click again is my three-point curve. So if I clicked again right there, it's done, and that's my curve. Okay? So see how that is? So if I drag all the way over here, and I moved it up, I would have a nice, smooth kind of hill design there that I could click again for my three-point curve. Or drag to the bottom, I have my three-point curve. So wherever I click there, I can just go here, click, and I have a nice, smooth path there. Okay, so does everybody see the difference between the three main ones, which is your two-point line, your B-spline, and your three-point curve? Those are your main ones that you're going to be using, and you can even see with the TRW Stone Wizard, in our shortcut toolbar that we have, you can see B-spline, two-point line, and three-point curve. So those are the three main that we use all the time, and that's why we included them in our shortcut in Corel Draw here. Okay, so I know we're I know we're um, pretty close to our time here, but I want to show you a few more things. So let me get going here, and a um, few things I do want to definitely show you. One is our welding feature. So these two boxes right here, you can see they're obviously overlapping. If we want to weld these together, we're going to highlight both of them, go to Object, Shaping, and Weld and see how it welds those together. So now we have one object that got rid of all that fill on the inside. So you're going to use the welding feature a lot when it comes to your rhinestone designs and even your basic designs. Welding feature, again, we'll have it in our shortcut as well to make it easier to get to, but something you're definitely going to use a lot in Corel Draw. So everybody sees what happened there? We have two different objects here. They're overlapping. We want to weld them together. Highlight, object, shaping and weld and that's going to weld them together. Next one we have is intersect. Highlight, object, shaping and intersect. What that does is it creates a extra area of where that intersection was. So see where these are intersecting right now. It's formed another square and I can even do this too we have a few different squares in there. If I highlighted these and go Object, Shaping, and Intersect, it's going to 
find that object of where that intersect is and create another object inside of it. So something off the start when you're brand new to Corel Draw, you won't be using quite as much, but still a, a pretty basic tool that as you're using Corel, you're going to see that to be very useful with your weld is definitely one of your main ones. And then one you'll be using in rhinestone designs a lot is your boundary. So say for example, and I'm just going to place rhinestones on this so you can see an idea of what I'm talking about is we have this design right here, okay? And we wanted to place rhinestones just around the outside of this purple, brown, and blue. Okay, we just wanted rhinestones to go around the outside of this. Well, that's the thing. You need to know a few features in CorelDRAW in order to do that. And what I mean is if I highlighted this, and let's just pick some orange stones. If I highlighted this here, and I went and created a outline of stones. If I did one island to the outside and I added stones to this, what it's going to do is it's going to do this right here. So watch. It's going to add the stones around it, but see how it added stones all to the inside area too? Well, that's something that we obviously didn't want. We just wanted them around the outside of our design. So the the shortcut tool that you use in CorelDRAW to allow that to happen is highlight all of your objects, go to Object, Shaping, and then Boundary. So when I click on Boundary, check out what that did. It only created a boundary of my furthest outside area of everything I had selected. So now when I create that island around it, it's only going to go perfectly into those spots around the outside of the design. Okay? Does everybody see what I did there? Because what it was doing before is the program was doing the right thing. It was placing an outline around each object, but that's not the end result we wanted. We wanted an object or to place the stones around the outside of all three of the objects, so that's why we created this boundary. Okay? Any questions on the boundary real quick? No? Perfect. Perfect. You guys are making it easy. Okay, and again, we're going to record this so you'll be able to watch it later with all the different basic tools that we're using here. But we want you to be able to have little webinars like this that are very simple because we know that a lot of you are brand new to Corel Draw and don't really understand a lot of the actual features yet. Okay? So... One other awesome feature that I want to show you here is I have three boxes here. And let's just say I wanted this box is blue, this one's green, and this one is pink. Okay. Well, the problem is, is I want to add some different areas in there or some different colors into this. So if I go back and just show the outlines of them, let's say I wanted this right here just to be one color, this little box one color, this area one color, well you would think it's pretty difficult to do that. But it's actually pretty simple in the software here. So what I'm going to do, right down here we have what's called our Smart Fill tool. So our Smart Fill tool, if we wanted to fill it in red and I click here, it's going to fill just the area there red. So here and here. Now, those were completely different objects, remember? So those were just three different squares. But what it does is it sees all those different lines right there, and it knows, okay, I don't want you to fill, like, for example, here, where if I clicked on red, it would fill the entire box. Or here, if I clicked on red, it would fill the entire box. Well, we don't want the entire box filled. We just want this area right here and not this small square. So when you click on the Smart Fill tool and you click on the area that you want it filled, all it does is that spot. So if you wanted the other one to be a pink and you wanted the next one to be an orange and you wanted the next one to be a purple and you can change them all around to whatever you want and that's what's cool about the Smart Fill feature is now these are all individual brand new objects that you just created with that smart fill. There's our original squares right there, but these right here are all of our original objects or that we just created with the smart fill by clicking one button. 
That's pretty cool, isn't it? So it's going to save you a lot of time when you're working with designs. So a lot of this is obviously going to make a lot more sense to you once you start seeing some of our uh, more intermediate or even some of our little bit more advanced of the beginner Corel Draw classes. But all of these are going to be your main different tools that you're going to be using over time. And then obviously one that I didn't cover is very basic, your text tool. If you want to type text in CorelDRAW, you just click on the text tool over there, click on the area where you want to start typing, and type TRW rocks, and whatever you want to type. So text tool, again, very, very simple tool. You click there, and text, but again, we don't want to overwhelm you. We know learning a brand new program is overwhelming, so that's why we want to be able to do live webinars. Yes, of course, we're taking, you're taking time out of your day. We're taking time out of the day here at the Rhinestone World, but we want to teach you the software. If you don't know how to use the software, then the software is pointless to you. Obviously, there's a big investment in CorelDRAW and the TRW Stone Wizard, and we understand that. So that's why we want to teach you all of the tips and tricks that we know from completely basic, you just turned on CorelDRAW and just installed it five minutes ago, all the way up until, hey, I've been using CorelDRAW for 15 years, and I've been using it longer than you have, Matt. So anything that we know... We're going to try and teach you. We want you to comprehend because we know when it comes to um, designing, that is, I mean, if you can't create a design, then you have nothing to send to your cutter. So if you have nothing to send to your cutter, then you can't put anything on a shirt or create a decal. So we know that your software is your most important piece of your business because that's where everything happens. So for example, if you don't know how to create a design, and you might be perfect at cutting templates, but if you never have a template to cut, you aren't going to be able to use your cutter. So we know that software is the most important. That's why we do so many webinars like we do over the software and cover it as much as we do. But I did have one question, and yes, I will run a couple minutes over here because I want to show you that. Um, had a question as far as creating the, the trace tool. So let me show you that because that is a very important feature in CorelDRAW. So I'm going to pull in a paw print here. So this right here is just a JPEG paw print, okay? And CorelDRAW does have some basic tra uh, trace bitmap feature. So this is just a basic paw print. So JPEG, PNG, whatever it is. And I'm going to come up here to the top, and I'm going to go to Trace Bitmap. So if I go to Trace Bitmap, and I just click on Quick Trace, what it's going to do, it's going to run a quick trace of that. So see this, you can now see cut lines. This right here is now a vector object. This right here is still my JPEG or my PNG. So obviously I want to break that apart because it's going to trace the entire object. So when I break this apart, you can see this right here is the pink or background that was back behind it. Now I have my five different objects. But very easy. It depends on how complex, obviously, the JPEG design is. It depends on how clear the design is. This one you can see is pixelated a little bit. But it actually did a pretty good job of tracing it there, that it, it actually kept the circles nice, it kept it nice, uh, nice and fluent throughout it to where it isn't real jagged in any spots. So it does a pretty good job. So you do have this trace bitmap feature inside of CorelDRAW already. And the big benefit of that is now that I have this as a bitmap I, or an actual vector file, I can add stones to the path. And then when I clear the path out, now I have a rhinestone design of that. Okay, so again, not going to go over anything really with the wizard, but I just wanted to show you, once you have that vector design with the wizard, how easy it is to add stones to it. Um, how did you, I remove the square? I removed the square by breaking it apart. So right now it's a vector object, but it's all grouped together. I just ungroup it. 
and then once it's ungrouped, I can delete that square back behind it, and now they're all individual. I can come in here, add stones to the path. Clear my pass, and there's my stone design. Okay, and that's also a heat transfer vinyl, anything else. Um, can I show tracing one more time? Of course I can, Lisa. So here's my JPEG or PNG file. Go up to trace bitmap. I can do a quick trace, or if I want to go to an outline trace, this gives you more options. So let's do a logo. So I'm going to click on logo, and then it's going to bring this up. So this is showing me what it's going to be. So if I wanted to, I could remove the background already. So see how the background's already removed? That saves me the steps of breaking it apart. I can also add more detail. I can take the smoothing out a little bit. So if I want more detail, if I want less detail, whatever you want, your corner smoothness, you can adjust all these sliders. Then when I hit OK, now you can see the background's not in there anymore. Okay? So it, again, this is a very basic JPEG or PNG design, so it's going to trace pretty nice where if you bring in a falcon head that's five different colors, something like that, you're not going to get these same results. It's going to help you, of course, but it's not going to look nearly as nice or clean as a basic uh, paw print like this one does. <coughs> um, are you going to do a class like this for the wizard? Stephanie, yes, we are. Um, Rudy is actually going to be running a live class, and that one is free as well at 10.30 Eastern Time tomorrow. And that's what I was going to do, because I know we ran over a little here, and I'm sorry for keeping you guys in here longer. But let me go ahead and pull that up so you guys can see the actual schedule. And this is actually on the website right now, the schedule. So I will show you where this is on the website once I get it pulled up right here. So we got, let me go to the rhinestoneworld.com. And let me pull this up here. Can everybody see my website again now? Okay, perfect. So if you go up here to the Rhinestone University, and I know a lot of you have been asking this for this, and we got it up today. So if I go to my TRW webinar schedule, here are, is a schedule of the webinars all the way through the 20th of this month, okay? So now you know when you can set a part-time to attend a webinar and if it's one that's going to work for you. So this is the one that we're completing right now, the basic Corel Draw introduction. And then tomorrow at 10.30 a.m., we have a basic overview of the TRW Stone Wizard. So that's going to be Rudy and Daniel. They're going to be doing a very basic overview, similar to like what we're doing right here, how to change a color, how to click on the different options, what different basic buttons do. So that will be over the TRW Stone Wizard. Also tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, so any of the nighttime classes, um, that one we're going to have Corel Draw and TRW Stone Wizard tips and tricks on creating unique designs. That one's going to be an intermediate class, so you'll want to have some knowledge of the Wizard and Corel Draw for that one because it is going to be going over some, a little bit more complex techniques as far as doing with designs. That's one of our live ones that's $10. Um, the great thing about all the live ones is if you attend a live webinar, whatever design I create in the webinar, you will get that design for free to be able to use to sell to your customers with the finished product. You'll also get a unique coupon code at the end of the webinar, and that is going to be for only the attendees that attend the paid webinar live. Um, we also have Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. That's going to be one of our live video streams. And that one is going to be how to design, cut, weed, and press a custom high school shirt for selling at schools. And we're going to use our GraphTech CE6060 for that one. Uh, Friday, we have the TRW Lounge. If you've never been to that, basically I'm, I'm in front of a camera and all of you can just ask me questions. So any questions that you have, um, just ask me questions. I can help you if you have questions on how to get into schools, how to cut designs, how to weed designs, what's the best cutting methods or pressing techniques or things like that. Completely free. You just come in, hang out with us, and, and we all have a big uh, question and answer session. 
So right after that, on Tuesday next week, we have another freebie that Rudy and Daniel are doing, how to create a unique design with the TRW Stone Wizard using true type fonts. And then we're going to actually start, this is the first time we've done this, the Rhinestone University classes. So those of you who came to our class at uh, NBM Charlotte, it's going to be uh, more geared to something similar to that, where it's going to be a live video feed of me teaching a class, and this one is how to get your product into schools, leagues, and teams for fundraising opportunities. So that's one of our paid, the Rhinestone University classes that we'll be holding, and that is at 10.30 a.m., and then also another class will be Thursday next week, and that's going to be how to maximize your profits with rhinestones, heat transfer vinyl, and vinyl decals. So a lot of stuff coming up here. Like I've been telling you guys that we're going to start gearing up, especially now that our trade shows are over, getting a lot of training classes going, a lot of teaching. We want to teach you everything about this business because at the end of the day, like I always say, the more successful every one of you are, the more successful we are as well. Um, will all of these have 500 seats? Yes, that is correct, Tessie. Um, all of we have upgraded our account for the TR to, or for the for the webinars, so we will always be able to have up to 500 attendees in all of our classes. So you shouldn't have a problem getting in um, right now. Some of our free classes, depending on what it is, you may want to register early if you can because um, we have gotten too close to that point a few times, but we haven't hit that magic 500 number yet. Um, do you have a true live class for PM? Um, Kim, we do not yet, but we may because what we're going to start doing is sending out basically uh, we want to get about a month notice, especially when it comes to the Rhinestone University classes. And the reason why we're doing the Rhinestone University classes online as well is because we want all of you that aren't able to attend trade shows to still be able to gain the knowledge that the, the different attendees that were able to attend the trade shows as well. So we want to start doing those live trainings and classes over the internet so you can do it from the comfort of your own home but it's also going to help your business obviously. Okay so I see that um, I think I'm pretty much caught up on all the questions here. I know there were some that were running through pretty quick but it looks like Rudy was able to grab all those. Any, any questions real quick that I may have missed? Um, how many days for the recording to be out? Um, I'll get with Daniel on that for the recording for this class, the freebie that we just did right here. We should probably have that up, uh, this one up by probably tomorrow afternoon, but normally it's 24 to 48 hours at the most. Rush, just get with Rudy. Tell Rudy to get that get that hurried up. <laughs> Okay, perfect. So I think, uh, is this in the TRW Stone Wizard? Uh, Marcel, what were you asking is, is what in the TRW Stone Wizard? Mockups, yes, mockups, the mockups are in the TRW Stone Wizard, yes. And Rudy will be going over some of that with the mockups tomorrow morning in the 1030 class, correct. So he'll be going over all the basic features. Uh, where is uh, where is the schedule? Uh, this schedule, Thomas. If you go, if you're on the website, the Rhinestone University, right here. If you click on the True Webinar Schedule, that's going to pull up this PDF right here, and then you'll be able to click on to these different areas right here to register for each of the classes. You got it, buddy. Okay, well, one thing I always ask at the end of every single webinar is even those of you that, that obviously know a lot about CorelDRAW, but was there at least one thing in this free webinar today that will help you that you've learned that's going to help you with CorelDRAW? One, one thing, that's my goal, is just for every one of you to learn at least one thing new that's going to help you. And yes, yes, awesome, 
Perfect. Yes. Okay. Did have a question right there for, are we going to have a Veterans Day special? We are going to have a uh, Veterans Day sale. Just to let you guys know what that sale is going to be, I'll let you, before we even spill the beans, it's going to be 30% off download files all day tomorrow. And that's for your download designs. It's also going to be 10% off heat transfer vinyl, rhinestones, and accessories. So three different things tomorrow. It's going to be 24 hours. We're going to post a picture here on the TRW Facebook page. So we're going to post a picture of what the coupon code is. And the coupon code, that will start at midnight tonight. So you'll have 24 full hours. But 30% off download files, the design files. And then 10% off heat transfer vinyl, which we very, very rarely do. So 10% off heat transfer vinyl, 10% off rhinestones, and 10% off supplies and accessories, which include the bling pages and protective cover sheets and tweezers and things like that. Okay? All right, perfect. Well, just make sure to check out the schedule here for the upcoming webinars. We do have a lot of free ones. We have some of the more intermediate and classes as well. So check those out. Make sure to get registered for those if you think they're going to help you. But if you do have any questions at all, of course, make sure to give us a call. The number is 941-755-1696. This is Matt and Rudy with the rhinestoneworld.com. You guys all have a great day.